Welcome back, everyone. The ongoing draw scarcity in Nigeria has taken a turn for the worse, with long queues lengthening at filling stations across the country, particularly in Abuja and Lagos, as well as other major cities. As such, the scarcity has led to a significant increase in goods and services, transportation. Uh, meanwhile, in a press release by the Chief Corporate Communications Officer, Olufemi Shunaye, the National Petroleum Company says it regrets the tightness in fuel supply witnessed in some parts of Lagos and the FCT, which is as a result of distribution challenges. It goes on to say the company further urges motorists to shun panic buying, as it is working round the clock with relevant stakeholders to restore normalcy. And I've been joined by Dr. Ayodeja Abdurraouf, founder CEO of Think Startup Beyond Borders. He's also a policy and financial analyst. Good evening to you, doctor. Thank you so much for joining us on Politics Tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nice coming to meet you guys this evening. Thank you for joining uh, it's us. It's been as well. a pleasure. Mm. Uh, I'm very, I'm trying to pull my system. Uh, okay. I guess I'm good to go this way. Yes, please. So, first scarcity has become uh, a normalized part of Nigerians. I'm not sure there is any Nigerian born and bred in Nigeria who does not have the experience of this hydra headed monster, fuel scarcity. For you, will we ever have a country overcome this, uh, this menace? Um, um, uh, evening, our uh, viewers, evenings, the guys in the studio over there. Um, this has been a perennial thing in this country. Mm. And to me, it has been systemic. It's a systemic issue. And uh, I hope the government will get up to get this thing sorted out once and for all. We are, here, we are, we are all witness to what happened when the, the DPR and the NMPC guy visited Dangote refinery and the kind of comment they pass. That has become a very hot one, hot issues in the public arena today because of the reactions of the people. Uh, do, uh, are the people, these so-called mafias in the, in, the, in the petroleum sector, really want Nigeria to get out of this petroleum scarcity? Are they ready for it? Uh, the, the complaints have been that the government have been holding on to uh, uh, we've been talking about subsidy. Is it really, uh, as, as the subsidy really gone? Mm. Uh, nobody can really testify to it. So, and that's why I said it's systemic. Uh, the, the peers in that sector need to be put to question. And the government needs to also to account for what they are doing with the, with the players in that sector. Uh, to me, uh, if Nigerians should look at the whole thing, there's, a, there's already a collision between the operators and the regulators. Uh, when the NFPC got, got, uh, became limited liability company, everyone thought it's going to be a, a free player for everybody. But NFPC is still playing the role today, Steve. Uh, they, 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 are, they are playing the role of a regulator and a player. So it's not clear to anybody. This scarcity, they are the only one that could explain it better. They've been trying to give defense to it. Uh, we just heard that the president asked them to buy the dividend that's supposed to be given to the people of Nigeria to subsidy. All these things is not clear to a lot of us that are, that are watching the trend of the economy. Sadly. But, I mean, you talked about whether or not subsidy is gone. And I'd like us to talk about that because international oil traders claim that the NNPC is owing them $6.8 billion. But the NNPC has denied these claims. What, what do you think is happening there? Uh, it boils down to systemic issue. Mm. And I like the way the, uh, the, the, my, my predecessors, you know, the former speaker, talk about the issues of the debt that we own. It's a systemic thing. Uh, at the beginning, when the president came on board in, in, in May in, 19, in 2023, he never knew what's on ground before he even announced the subsidy. But actually, they are trying to manage it, and it's it becoming more difficult and difficult to manage it because a lot of rotting has gone into that sector. And someone that is brave and courageous, like the current president, will have to come and let us know what is happening in that sector. Nobody's giving account to everything. How, how did they have a massive subsidy? Is it the subsidy that has been in the system prior before the subsidies is removed? Because that's the claim now. How, how will they have won so, so much? And then when the subsidy is removed, they are also, also ready to go up. The issue is not even the subsidy. It's the accountabilities of the way we manage that system. When you say you give someone subsidy, nobody is checking whether it's really bringing fuel or it's bringing fuel and taking it back 
to sell in to sell in our neighbor, neighbor, neighboring countries. Nobody knows that. It still boils down to accountability and transparency of the system for Nigerians to really know the issue. If the government is not coming up for us to know what is really happening in that sector in terms of the inflows and outflows of transactions in the petroleum sectors, I don't think we'll get out of this mm. poor scarcity. Mm. You know, some oil uh, operators here in Lagos say they do not have stock of the product at the depot. And the NNPC say they're working to fix it this week. As of today, on the 19th, uh, there are still long and unending queues out there. How visible is this midweek brake light as announced by the NNPC? Uh, it'd, be like a, it'd be like a miracle again. They're going to solve it. Mm. I, think, I think now is not going to be permanent. It's going to be feasible, as NNPC has said. They're going to work you know, 24-7 to make sure that we have resort and welfare scarcity is stabilized but I'm telling you this is not the final solution uh give us give them another two three months something is going to happen before the end of the year again and they're going to be in the same for scarcity then we have not solved the problem nigeria should stop being reactive to issues of things to rather go down and be more active our our players and regulators should sit down with us in that sector and declare emergency and get the final solutions to the problem Nigeria is facing mm. in terms of forest scarcity. And that, that has been the issue. And the only way we can get this resolved is to do a, 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 a rejigging of the, of, of the system in the petroleum sector. If, if there's no total restructuring in that system, and the same key players are still doing their game the way they are doing it, and they are playing with the life of Nigerians and will continue to suffer the pressure of scarcity of fuel, right. something that we have in our but 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 uh, I, I see light at the end of the tunnel, and the way, that's the way the Dangote has you know in unilaterally to fit the map. Mm. Dr. Adeji, uh, Dr. Can you hear me? If the stars, yes, please. All right, you know, over the weekend, there was also this conversation about hoarding of uh, fuel by. Uh, petrol stations, because rep members say from their findings, at least 1.5 billion liters of petrol was available to serve the country for 30 days. I mean, this is 2024, and in the past one year, there have been policies and regulations to sanitize the oil and gas sector. I mean, from your observation, are these policies not capable of addressing these constant logistics issues? You said it all. Is the policies in that sector? And what I'm advocating is for us to collapse those regulators and the operator in that for now. For, for, for government to come out and get things cleared. Who, who are these operators? You know, most of the operators in the sectors today are indirect operators. The real people that are really operating in Nigerian petroleum sectors are not even the player there. So most of them are proxy. And that's why the market will still continue to be a black market to all of us. Why the current systemic situation will continue to go on. Unless the government decide and really ready, we, we, we sell the sectors as, as been privatized. That's, that's the way we see it. But it's not, it's not really privatized. Somebody is holding on to it because that's the only source of income for some people that are not really functional and productive in this country. So my, 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 own, my own contributions on that level is for us to get out of these policies. Government must declare that sector, an, an emergency in that sector. And get want to solve this problem once and for all. Let's know who are the players, the real players that have faces. I can tell you one thing today. Some players in this sector that are not even feasible. And it's only NPC that can fish them out. Yeah. You know, people, people are, 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 are in the sector... And we cannot, can they even tell us and give us data of the mm. people that are operating the market today? There are some people that are operating in proxy and nothing is done by the regulator. There's no way we can continue such thing. But I have hope in the sector because now that we've got a refinery, one of the biggest refinery in West Africa in this country, if things go the way it's going and the government is ready to do the bid as, as promised and they give them the chance to have that supplies in Naira, they're going to cry for it. They put Nigerians in a mess for too long, and they want to continue to ride on Nigeria 
on, on Nigerians, uh, uh, make, um, what I call ignorance about the sector, mm. because many Nigerians are very ignorant about the sector. You when know, government uh, removes subsidy, they thought that's all it. It's not here. Some people are really fighting it. Mm. You know, for countless times now, the issue of accountability and transparency has been raised. And for that purpose, I'd like us to shift our attention to the nation's refinery. The refinery keeps undergoing turnaround maintenance, costing billions without refining PMS needed for the nation. And the question has been, who are uh, the people responsible for these allocations and why are there no checks? And many have said, perhaps it's time to either close or sell off the refineries. What do you make of this, doctor? Same thing, same thing, very same thing that is happening in the in 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 the upstream is happening in that in that refinery rehabilitation. It's the same corruption, the same systemic issue. For how long have it been rehabilitating? If even the fund for the years, if you go and do the estimate, can build us another refinery. Nigeria will have got a new refinery in another in another location. But 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 we we'll continue to spend that money just because we cannot differentiate between regulator and the operators in that sector. The, the so-called regulator that's supposed to guide the maintenance and ensure efficiencies in, in, in what government set out to achieve in terms of rehabilitations, and the one that are also dealing with the other people that are bringing money into the country. So they would rather find Nigeria to perpetrate continuing to supply crude oil to some people, and some people are bringing it and making millions of dollars out of it, at the period of the Nigerian economy. All right. And I will continue to say the intervention of Dangote is going to change the rhythm. It's going to change the narrative. And by the time they start supplying, I hope there's no 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 devil hands to go as they had, as they attempted to damage his image in a couple of weeks ago uh, to, to, to disrupt the flow that will be out of it. Because some international, so even some foreign country already enjoying his, uh, his vision fuel and all that things that are coming, even diesels. Mm. So, what is wrong with us? Absolutely. Why, 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 that's the why question. is it the systemic thing Doctor, cannot get that, out of us? That's the question. What is wrong with us as a nation? But finally, before I let you go, the chairman of the Senate Ad Hoc Committee investigating uh, alleged economic sabotage in the petroleum industry. About a week ago, we heard Senator Pwemi Bamidele say they will do a thorough job this time. So, how confident are you about this? In one minute. I can get you again. All right. Uh, sadly, What's the we're, question? sadly, we're out of time, Doctor. Uh, I may not be able to take that question again. But thank you so much for joining us this evening. Dr. Ayodeji Abdurrahu, founder, CEO, uh, Think Startup Beyond Borders. is also a policy and financial analyst. Thank you so much for your perspectives tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank right. you. And thank you.